Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Ask Leffy Podcast. We're here to talk about something that we get a lot of questions about. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, we are. We definitely get a lot of questions about them. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually get a lot of questions about flushing and filling our manifolds. Yeah, um, I had a, a, a guy email in on the tech support email said, hey, do you have a video or can you explain? Because there's nothing in the instructions. Right. And yeah. I guess, I guess, shame on us, we just assume that a guy in the field would know how to do that. Yeah, because you're right. It's not included in our instruction manual how to flush and fill the manifold. We've got instructions on how to install it and how to balance it, but uh, nothing on flushing and filling. And, and probably because there's really no direct, set of instructions you can follow to flush and fill a manifold. There's so many different ways you can do it, and water takes the path of least resistance, so there, there isn't an exact set of steps that you take. You well, kind of have to be a little creative. Right. Well, and a lot of a lot of guys are used to filling right in through the boiler fill on the boiler side. Right. But and you can beauty, do that. And you can do that. It might take longer. In fact, I almost guarantee it will take longer versus using the... Uh, the purge valves that we offer with the manifold that come on it right below the air vent. Right. Yeah. If you've looked at our manifolds, our 663 or 668 series, you'll see that on the connection inlet, supply inlet and return outlet of the manifold going to your system, we have ball valves there. Yep. So you can shut off and isolate that manifold. On the other end of the manifold, we have an air vent on the supply and return side and an auto air vent, and we have a boiler drain. Yep. Under under both both sides, so you have a way in and a way out, right? With garden hose connections. So if you look at it, the only thing connecting the top manifold to the bottom is the pecs between it, right? Exactly, pecs between it, and the beauty of our our manifold too is you got isolation on both sides. You can shut off on the six six eight S one A's. You can close off the balancing valve side, mm-hmm. and you can also shut off the return side, right? Right, so, so you have a f- complete isolation of that loop. You can isolate all loops and start with one loop and and open them up one at a time. Right. So whether you're filling from the boiler side, I mean that's one way you can do it. Greg mentioned that when I filled the systems, a lot of times I use the boiler fill to flush the sure, manifolds. Sure, sure. You, uh, you put that, it you put it in bypass mode and and let that that fast fill feature take over and and do what it does. Right. And when I did that, typically I would shut the return ball valve off on the manifold. I would connect a hose to the drain on the return side of the manifold. And then I would fill that manifold through the boiler supply side coming in. And that would bring it into the top supply side manifold through the tubing back into the return and then out my hose that was connected to that drain. Um, And it worked well. I mean, it, it can take a little longer because like Greg mentioned, you know, you, you know, you're filling from the boiler side. Yeah, so you have all the near boiler piping to go through and possibly the boiler, depending on where, where things are situated. But you got to make it through all of that first then to get to the manifold. Right. Yeah, and typically when I did that, I would, you know, I would open up all my, all my circuits and I would just start to flow water through that manifold. And it takes patience. It does take time. And I would have my hose open and I'd just start getting that water moving through it. And then once I had it moving through the manifold... Um, I would shut down all of the ports on the return side sure. except one. Yeah. And I would purge that loop, and then I would open that one, and or I, I would close that one and open the one next to it, and I'd work my way across the manifold. That's perfect. Yeah, it takes time. It does. Purging does take a lot of time. It, it's a very tedious process, and no matter how you like to do it. I mean, I'll mention my favorite way of doing it. Yep. Just you have those isolation ball valves on the inlet and outlet side of the manifolds, close them off. And then I would say hooking a garden hose right to the return, the return manifold on the bottom of that, that purge valve. And then either hooking it to 
the flush cart and the demineralized water, or if you have another water source, uh, a washer hose, if you've got a, a slop sink close by that's got garden hose connection, yeah. that's a quick way to fill. It's a good resource. It is. I mean, you're even a hose bib, if you, if you, yeah, at all, at all costs, you always have a hose bib you can grab to, to right to run. But you have a way of running water in the supply side, and again by isolating off the loops and opening them up one at a time, running it until you see nothing but pure water coming out. You're done getting burps of air. Close that off and move on to the next one and repeat that process over and over until it's completely purged. Right. So that's a great option. I mean, I was filling from the system side of the manifold, and you like to isolate it and fill from the the drain valves. Yeah. Essentially bringing water in through one of the one of the purge points and then removing water from the other. And you mentioned what I like with your with your option is that it's a great way to hook a demineralizer up and and improve the water quality of what you're what you're putting into your system. Right. Yeah, rather than pumping a whole bunch of system water, especially if you get hard water. Right. You know, this is this is always a hot topic of discussion too is water quality. Yeah. And you can never have enough good water in the system. Right. Well, exactly. And then when you when you look at it, you know, there you know, because water takes that path of least resistance, it just takes time. So that's why, you know, you mentioned you like doing it, I like doing it, closing off once all the circuits except one and purging each one individually. And then once you get them flushed out well and you put that system into operation, you count on your air vents on the manifolds to take over and, and provide the rest of the purging. Right, exactly. Well, you always need a way of pumping water in, doing it the way I like it. And say say you don't have a garden hose connection, but you have, you end up, you, you can bucket water in or whatever it might be. But if, if you have that, that fill and flush cart that we build so many of. That's a great resource. Shameless plug for that product. Right. <laughs> but that thing's nice. You, you have everything you need right there, pump, hoses. You can you can hook that thing right up to a manifold, fill the hopper, you know, fill right. the tank full of hopefully demineralized water, or if all you got is site water, then you do what you have to do. Fill that up and, and let it pump. Right. You can let that run for a while, and you'll pull that air out through that fill and flush cart. Right. And any debris that might be stuck in, in, in the tubing, you know, right. if, it was, if it was run during construction, sand and dirt, someone ripped the mm-hmm. tape off or pulled the plugs off of it or whatever, there's a good chance there might be debris in it. So that fill and flush cart is really handy to be able to take the dirt and debris out of the tubing rather than hopefully not get it stuck in the manifold. Yeah, it sure is. And then also um, by using the pump, you're raising the velocity of the water through the tubing. So you're going to get that air to move. You're going to keep that air right. moving a little easier than you would with just the street pressure street water. Pressure. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, you get a lot more, a lot more velocity and movement that way. Yep. And then again, you remember once you put it in service, you have your your air vents on the manifolds that that will take over and, and yeah. finish it. You're not going to get every inch of air. It's so tough to get every bit of air, but the air vents are there to help you with that. Any little bit that you missed, um, say it gets caught in a high spot somewhere in a manifold and you can't quite get it to flush out, it'll work its way out. Yeah, it will. So that covers our 663 and 668. We have our 172 mixing manifold, and I yeah. get a number of questions on that as well. That's always a, 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 a point of curiosity for a lot of people because they see it. And it's it's our 668 S1 manifold, but then we combined a mixing station that includes a hydraulic separator, a mixing valve, and an elbow and pump. Right. And on that elbow, you do have a manual purge vent, the pump, and the pump, you can either get it with uh, a, a high-efficiency pump. I think it's, yeah, it's with the, the Alpha, Alpha Grunfoss Alpha pump or the 1558 three right. speed, two options. Right. And then you have the option to either keep the hydraulic separator or that H-fitting in there, which has a check valve in it, or remove it. And that's another question we get a lot of, too. Yeah, when do you leave it and when do you remove it? And it really depends on how your system's piped before the manifold. If you're counting on that pump in that manifold to be the the zone pump or system pump as well as the manifold pump, then you're going to remove it. Exactly. If you have another pump in line pumping to the mixing manifold, then you're going to want to leave that in. Yep. That that H fitting stays in to prevent the pump conflict. 
Right, but easy enough to, to remove in the field. But when it comes to flushing and filling that, that one can be a little bit more challenging. Right, with, with that H fitting in, even when you have, we have isolation valves below that H fitting, if you close them off, guess where the path of least resistance is now? It's through that H fitting. Yeah, it is. So, and well, and because it has a mixing valve in it, that the, too. Re- the return side from the water coming back from the tubing is going through the mixing valve and also back to the return. So, if you have that H separator in there, um, it can go down and through that H separator and back up the supply side, yes. and you can run a loop purging, purging just the manifold without the tubing. So, that's where you really need to you know, work with the valves on the manifold to isolate each loop. And, 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 you know, I like Greg's method in this manifold specifically because bringing water back in up on the supply side, pulling it out on the return side through the, the drain ports yep. kind of isolates your boiler feed. So you can shut those valves off right at the manifold. Yep. Having a transfer pump, and even if you don't own one of our cool carts, Having a, a high head pump that you can move a lot of lot of velocity with, um, with a bucket and hoses, just like you know sometimes we had doing the field. Oh yeah, um, if yeah. We were unfortunately, lucky. I wasn't lucky enough to have one of them. <laughs> no, me either. A cart or a bucket or, or hoses. It was always you're using whatever water's there. <laughs> right, right. So it's it's very important to on the one seventy two to definitely purge through the the drain valves it just it works so much better i think it does and and i think i would say with that manifold um it's going to take a little bit more patience with purging it because of that of that mixing valve in place but certainly certainly easy enough to do it just takes a little bit more time and patience yeah patience is key with anything yeah anytime you're doing hydronic work it takes more time it absolutely does well, I think we covered that pretty well. Yeah, quick little snippet, but boy, we've been getting calls on that recently when guys are starting to fill systems and get them ready to run this winter. So I thought thought maybe that would be a good thing to jump on and talk about. Yeah, hopefully it's helpful. And eventually I think we're going to put together a YouTube video. I don't think, I know. Yeah, we are, yeah, we are going to put together a YouTube video on, on the steps to take and, and purging one of these manifolds. So yeah, you'll find that on our Ask Cleffy blog. Yes, we'll post a, a link there when it comes to it. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.